Yeah, I mean, I remember getting that script, and I remember reading it in like my like old bedroom in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and like within six. Oh, sorry, sorry, hit the mic. Within like. You know. Oh, shit, I hit the mic again. <laughs> I'm just too excited remembering the moment when I first read Diablo's I'll script. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff. Thank you if you're listening, if you're watching, if you're doing all that stuff. Thank you for doing that. Um, I have been blessed with the guests that I've been able to have so far on this show and for Collider Live. Last week, sitting at my desk, got an email. Hey, would you like to speak to Ellen Page? I like to speak to Ellen Page. Are you kidding me? From Juno, Inception, Hard Candy, X Men. I mean, she's been in so much stuff, and she's promoting a new event that she's doing a live read with her Juno director, Jason Reitman. Um, it's a live read of Casablanca, and she wanted to come in and talk about it. So it was a shorter interview, but still, nonetheless, it was great to talk to her. She's down to earth, she's chill, she's very, very cool. Um, just a very, very nice person. I was able to just talk about a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, she did in her career. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure that you do you rate and comment and do all that stuff. And enjoy my interview with Ellen Page. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff. Thank you for joining us once again. Make sure if this is your first time listening that you subscribe, whether it's the Apple Podcasts or if it's Podcast One, whatever it is. Leave a comment, do the whole thing, subscribe to the podcast YouTube channel. I have had some really fun guests, but when I'm a big fan of somebody, it's even more fun for me. And today is one of those times. Ellen Page, how are you? I'm well, thanks. That's very kind. Thank oh, it, so I, it's true. And I told the story right before we got on air. Um, as people know, I used to do stand-up for a very long time. Um, I met you 2007, I believe it was. You had come up to me after I had a set. You had some very kind words. And those, ty those types of things stick with you. When, you know, it's first of all, I was a fan of your work. I knew who you were. And when you said that, it was just encouraging. It's just something sometimes you need to hear. So I said well, thank you then. I said thank you now. Oh, well, it was all you, clearly. No, yeah, well, so. that night. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't see me on other nights. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about I want to get right into this because December 13th in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, some special stuff going on where Jason Reitman, who obviously you worked with in, in Juno and have kept a relationship with and done other live reads with, which I always thought was really cool that he does a lot of these things. Yeah, you, you got to go if you've never gone. Like, I, I think, I mean, I didn't even know about it until right. the other day when I, and they said, hey, Ellen Page is doing this thing. And I had known about the live reads because Catherine Reitman, his sister, was a co-host on my show right, for a long right, time. Right. And they, she had mentioned that he'd done a bunch of these. So tell me about this one's Casablanca. Yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. Let's, let's break it down. What's happened? Yeah, I'm stoked. Well, we wanted to take this sort of um, iconic uh, film, you know, some of the most memorable lines of all time, one of the greatest screenplays of all time, and one of the most iconic love stories and romance stories about, you know, sacrifice, et cetera. And we wanted to take it and we wanted to have a more inclusive cast so it's all... Um, you know, queer women or queer and women. Mm -hmm. you know, we're still casting. You can imagine nope. with oh, yeah, it's not the whole schedules right, 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 and right. everything. Um, but so far, who is involved are fucking awesome, and we'll announce them soon. And um, and yeah, so we just wanted to sort of reimagine it, and then all the money, all the proceeds go to the Estrella Lesbian Foundation for Justice, which is just the most phenomenal, phenomenal uh, foundation. That Can you tell me a little bit about them? Because I heard about these, I, again, didn't know enough about it, and then I heard about some of it, and I'm, I'm, can you tell me a little bit more about Australia? Yeah, sure. Australia is, uh, the work they do so amazing because they give sort of grants and, and support and, and help with the development of, like, a lot of grassroots activists and activists and organizations that are sort of specifically focused on the more marginalized members of community who can who can often be left behind, you know. Yeah. Um, so, or, or have been left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, they're a phenomenal organization. I feel humbled to be involved with them in any capacity. And, um, yeah, I just, and I really can't just separate, like, I mean, that's obviously the most important thing of the evening, but I can't stress enough how fun these nights are. Well, that's what I always heard about these. And I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that every time that Jason does one of these live reads, it's to, it's a benefit to, and he's always trying to do some charity for, for these to get big stars out there, but reading these roles, but it's also incentive to say, listen, we're doing this for a good cause as well, but we're also having a lot of fun. Totally. Yeah. I mean, when do you get nights like this? It's like not recorded. 
some actors who've never even met before coming together and like just doing this fun thing and right. mistakes can happen and you know and everybody brings their own spin to it it's not like we're you know there's no like impressions you know it's like really this sort of it's a really beautiful experience. Yeah, I think that's fun too because you guys had done, done you did Juno and it was an yeah. all female cast, when yeah. you were, which is really cool. Yeah, as it was well like too. Kristen Wiig and Ali Ashakat and awesome. Issa Rae. I mean, and so many, yeah, yeah, many others. Did you reprise the role? I did. You did. Yeah. That's cool. It was a it that's was cool. a blast. Did you do a different spin to it when you did it of that time? No. Do you... you know it's weird because sometimes in my life I'll like try to talk like Juno and I don't know how to do it. But then when the script there and sort of Diablo's like flow. Right. Um, you, uh, I just fell right into it. That's so awesome. It was really, really fun. Yeah, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that movie in a little bit, but I still want to, I want to stay on the stage because I also read um, that you, you did, I don't know if this was still Jason or this was a different one, but you did Han Solo. Yes, well, Was yes. that Jason as well or was that something different? Yes, that was Jason. It was Jason as and well. And also at the Ace Theater, so was the Juno oh, one, I which see. is also such a beautiful okay. theater. And uh, yeah, that was, that was awesome. That's and that was cool. a night too where, you know, such a great energy. People dressed up like, Asking this, you know, asking certain people who are like, what would you call them? Star Wars specialists, yeah, basically, yeah, sure. who like would help me with word pronunciation. Yeah. And uh, Did you dress and then the Mark best? Hamill like surprised everybody. Oh, that's awesome. And came out on stage. And oh, I just wow. had one of those like, what is life moments? Seriously, you know? yeah, 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 it was really, yeah. That's really cool to, I mean, because you, special. And I love the fact that you were able to keep this relationship with Jason, and then he's used to getting involved, working on projects like this. Yeah, there was something I read about you that I wanted to um, talk because my daughter is going to be seven uh, tomorrow, actually. And so I had this whole thing that happened this week, uh, this past weekend. I took her to the Disney store and I tweeted this whole thing out because she loves Star Wars. She loves action figures. She loves, uh, you know, I read about you that you like, you played with action figures. You used to climb trees. You did all this stuff when you were a kid. And it reminded me of my daughter. So my daughter picks up this lightsaber and behind her in the Disney store, it says boys toys. And, uh, and I said to my, and my daughter looks at it, she reads it and she goes, it's not boys, these are kids toys. And I was like, they gave you the fist bump. Totally. And then I tweeted it out because and and Disney, who I thought has been so good in regards to you know, putting Ray or Felicity Jones or all these people inside of the the leads now with women, I was shocked that it was it felt like something that happened like the '60s. I know, but it's everywhere. It's yeah. like I was going, I was like going to shop for a card, and it's like birthday for him and birthday for you know, and it's just like we're so obsessed with this like binary idea of gender, which is just you know. Right. Um, absurd, and um, so uh, so yeah. I mean, clearly there's a lot of changes, and um, but uh, yeah, it's still. We're working you, this on happened it. the other day to a friend of mine. She was with her little daughter, who was like in the you know this quote, quote unquote boys section yeah, right. of like a store, and the woman came up and was like, "No, like your clothes are over there." And my friend like left the store with her daughter. And so. I, I wanted to too. I mean, I wanted to yeah. as well. I said something, but the reason I bring it up though too is because what I wanted to talk about you with the with action figures and climate cheese, like because you grew up in Canada. Yeah. Um. What, what were you like as a kid? Um. Yeah, I was a little. Yeah, I was. I mean, I feel like I didn't comprehend how because I was always like so tiny and yeah. the tiniest in my class. But I just like played a lot of like football with the boys, you know, and a lot of soccer and... You're pretty athletic? Vi yeah, yeah, I played a lot of, lot of sports and soccer for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I yeah. was a little, yeah. When did you get interested in acting and performing? Did you do it, was that at home as well? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was kind of accidental. Um, um, uh, this uh, man who actually uh, recently passed, who was a wonderful person and really, like, his name's John Dunsworth. If you know Trailer Park Boys, he played Mr. Leahy on oh, right, Trailer right, Park right, Boys. Right. So he had a casting sort of office company, and he came to my school when I was ten, looking for kids to uh, audition, and um, and I got the part in this little like CBC movie of the week, and then that turned into a TV show. And yeah. did you fall in love with it then? Well, I mean, I really loved it. Like yeah. you're a kid, and sure, you're like sure. having these, you know, going to this beautiful place called Cape Breton for the summers. And you were um, 10, I'm sorry, is that what you said? 10, 10 okay. yeah, and then the show was 10, 11, 12, yeah. it's called Pit Pony. Yep. And, um, and it was really when I was 15, and I think it corresponded with like in general having more interest in film and art and music, and it was like the first time I was actually getting really moved emotionally on a deep level. Yeah. And, uh, 
And when that started happening, I just was like, oh, I want to do this and learn as much about this feeling as I can. Well, it seems, and one of the things, too, getting, because there's always that risk, right, At, uh, for when someone gets involved younger, you see some, it goes terribly wrong sometimes. It doesn't seem like that happened with you at all. You're, pretty, you're, you're dedicated to it. You, you stick around. You're home for a bit. You're in this show. At what point are you able to, and do your parents say, okay, you, you're going to, to California. Do you do it before you're legally an adult or you or? When do you decide to, 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 to move? Well, I actually moved when I was 16. You did? And okay. I moved to Toronto. And, um, and, and yeah, I went to school there. That Like a school sort of designed for kids who had to be away a lot. Yeah. Other actors, athletes, you know, pr like prodigy musicians, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and just worked and worked and worked and worked. Was it scary for you when you left Canada, you came to L.A.? Or you were pretty much, you had been working in the business, you had some pretty good jobs at that point that you would, you just, it was part of the gig. I mean, yeah, I think I was used to, at a young age, like, moving around a lot. Right. And, like, you know, um, but, you know, when I first came here, I was, like, 17, and I shot um, Hard Candy. That's what I was going to ask you about, yeah. Yeah, and then I came back really in the time of sort of, Juno and that craziness. That's when I was first being like here and then here permanently. Right. Because that's when all really started to blow up. Because if you look for Hard Candy, for example, and you were around 16, 17, around that, that area, doing About 17? 18 when it, like 17 when we made it. When you then, made it. Yeah. So again, 17, that's some like mature subject matter for a 17 year old to do. And you hand, and that's everything that you do. A lot of stuff that you do, like Juno. Where does that come from? Because like the fact that you're able to kind of tune it, because it's, if you give that type of material sometimes to some kids that it's not believable, you never question it when you do it. Whether it's stuff in regards to Juno or even even more so later on in life, like Inception, which is later on in your career, but it's still it's believable. It's being able to tune in. How how do you how are you able to kind of do that at a young age at seventeen? Hmm. I feel well. I feel like I was so fortunate um, to work in Canada with so many extremely talented people yeah. um, like Daniel McIver and Molly Parker and Rebecca Jenkins and you know just really um, phenomenal Bruce McDonald like really incredible people and I feel like I learned a lot and was exposed to like I was saying like art and music and all these things that really you know it yeah. like makes you feel especially when you're a teenager, you know, the depth of feeling. And also, like, I'm like, oh, my God, should I even say this? But I had a, I had a bad stalker when I was 16. Oh, really? And I feel from the TV like... From uh, Huh? From the TV show, from a fan of the TV yeah, show. Yeah, you know. And, um, and so, like, I feel like I had a lot of... <laughs> when, hard can when I read Hard Candy, I was sort of like, this is trippy. And then I feel like a lot of anger got to come out in you that one. You tuned into it, see? And that's what a, a great um, performer can do. And you did that. And then... Obviously, so there was two, jumping around here a little bit, because when you were first cast as Kitty Pride, and then you come back years later, did you have, were you hesitant to come back? Is it, I don't know if it was a contractual thing that you could come back for a sequel or not, but because like, it was the one that came out, and then Days of Future Past was years later. Did you want to come back? Yeah, first? I mean, I think it's like an incredible group of people. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I feel like Hugh Jackman is actually one of the nicest people I've, I've ever that. met. Like, know. if not, good. like, I have never seen that man nothing but like the kindest, sweetest soul, awesome. you know? And uh, you hear that Halle Berry, yeah. all, all, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, it's a Anna Paquin, Sean Ashmore, like a lovely, lovely group of people. Good. And Patrick Stewart and Ian McCall. I mean, I mean, and of course, Jennifer Lawrence and Michael. Jennifer Lawrence everybody, and Michael yeah, Fassner, but sure. I was working obviously with the, you know, the older group. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and even sitting and watching Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen work, you just get like lost in it because they're just <laughs> yeah. like, no matter what they're saying, you're just utterly captivated. Yeah, you're tuned into it, and I think that that's one of the things that, and because you've been in the business now for a little bit, that still never really changes, does it? Like because you're you're always in awe of somebody in one way or another, and. And it's really magical. I just finished working with Laura Linney. Yeah. who's just like absolutely one of my, you know, what a legend. Like, yeah. and I just rewatched um, "You Can Count on Me," and it just like destroyed me um, in a crying way at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. And you know, she's just like, and the loveliest person, and the most like generous, awesome um, actor. And 
yeah, it's and, just like this is magical. Right, and you're just able to learn, and you feel like you're always constantly picking stuff up. You're a student of the game. You're paying attention to it all. Like yeah, and when someone's like that present and that good, yeah. like it forces you to be there too, you know. And right. it's like so. Uh, yeah, I what? sound so actory. No, right but now. no, no, but but it's true though. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, one of the things too that I think <laughs> that uh, for that example. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. What I thought of when you just said that was how you were able to go toe to toe with Julianne Moore. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, oh. like it was, it was. So oh, I, when, I love that movie. Me People too. should see that movie. It's, and when, I, when did I? And say I'm that? the first to say when I don't. I don't want to say which ones, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair. But yeah. I, but but when and when we were, um, when did I see? I, just, I can't remember. If I saw it a screener or when I saw it in the theater. I can tell you, I saw it in a theater at a screening, and I remember saying to myself, like again, like you, Julian. We were just talking about this the other day. Someone brought it up. They asked if they thought Julian Moore was one of the top 10 actresses working today. And I said, 100%. 100%. 100%. And because we were talking about Kings, uh, Kingsman 2. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't love it. It wasn't, wasn't my favorite performance of hers, but I think she's so great and everything. She's easily. And I remember that role with you guys, and I'm going, man, and that's the type of thing, I'm sure you, how much you took out of that. and Yeah, well, similar. Yeah, L- Laura, yeah, yeah. obviously, I just worked with. Right. so, But yeah, I, I mean, Julianne is just, and also, like, the, one of just the most lovely, joyous, yeah goofy delightful people you could you know we would just you know I mean I say that we were obviously shooting a movie with really intense subject matter um and definitely uh uh you know so I don't want to sound right you know but um yeah just really really lovely people you hear about that sometimes too when it comes to a lot of the serious movies you got to kind of because sometimes um when the camera's not rolling that you want to make sure you're a little more lighthearted. I guess it depends on the scene, obviously, too. Yeah. But I mean, there's absolutely. sometimes you want to, don't want to just be down the entire time yeah. because then. Can I just say that Julia Moore is such a good actor that she can be so just like funny and teasy and all those things and, and, like right before action and then it's like Julianne Moore right. like destroys a take and yeah. you're like excuse me yeah but sometimes I think it's this feeling of like again so actory oh my god but there is like this feeling of you almost want to be completely open yeah. I think rather like brooding to get into something right and does that take and that's I guess it's a progression and your that's just too. me like yeah. obviously people are different they approach things different so to be that's your process you know, yeah like, sure yeah. and then let's and jumping back again because of the whole reason here today as far as the um, working with Jason Reitman again and with Juno and that obviously changes I think changes your life that film in general because of just how it comes out and I heard, and I heard a recent interview with you and talking about how it just it just portrayed teenagers in, in that circumstance very differently that we yeah. had seen before. Is that one of the reasons that the role uh, was attractive? Yeah, I mean, I remember getting that script and I remember reading it in like my like old bedroom in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and like within six, oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> hit the mic. Within like, you know, oh shit, I hit the mic <laughs> again. I'm just too excited for. remembering the moment <laughs> when I first read Diablo I'll script. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but within like, yeah, six pages, I just was like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna do this. Yeah. And I think I related, cause you know, I was a tomboy and you know, had, was navigating my own identity, you right. know, and uh, Juno was, was able to be this sort of different kind of idea that, you know, um, that teenage girls had sort of been, yeah. you know, not, not, you know, completely, but, um, and just like, yeah, like the way she dressed and, you know. Did um, you know that you had something special as you guys were, were, were filming it? Yeah, I remember like Michael and I being like, this sound, you don't think that this independent film you're gonna make is gonna go and, you're gonna be on like the Oprah show. Like, right, do you know right. what I'm saying? And then you you're, you're going. To what and extent. Absolutely. Right, right, but right. it did feel special. And I remember uh, Russ Smith, who I uh, adore, um, who works with Mr. Mudd. They produced okay. it, John Malkovich's company. And uh, I remember him one day, like two weeks in, being like, you know, saying, This, this is um, probably, yeah. And it did. And it did. And it, it absolutely put you in the forefront. And I remember, because I'd seen Hard Candy, um, but this was the one that I went, Oh, that's Ellen Page. That's like, watch out because here she comes. And you did, and you did so much. What I've noticed though is because you're going and you're doing a lot of TV now, right? You're doing the yeah. Netflix series coming up pretty soon. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, as much as you can, I guess. Yeah, sure. So I, there's one that comes out in uh, February 15th, okay. actually. It's called The Umbrella Academy, okay. which is based on a, a fantastic graphic novel. And um, 
And yeah, no, I, I'm I'm stoked. Yeah. This is uh, to me a really new show. Yeah, who do you play in that one? Can you say? Um, yeah, I can. So the Umbrella Academy is about uh, there's a, there's a uh, in, one day in the 80s, there 43 women have uh, give birth, but they weren't pregnant at the beginning of the day. Okay. And then this man, uh, who's like a Elon Musk meets Howard Hughes or something, wow. goes and buys yeah, yeah. like seven of them. Yep. And they all have some kind of power, except for my character. And uh, the beginning of the pilot is like, you know, his death and all these sort of kids who were basically turned into like a childhood superhero yeah. team. And they're like, you know, I have a lot of trauma. It was a really fucked up childhood. Yeah. And so it's this sort of genre, but I think, you know, it's uh, new and fun. That's and so much fun about Netflix now too. You can explore in such ways in television that you just couldn't do 10 years ago. Yeah. And you're able to do that now and that's, um, do you like playing in the in that kind of fantasy, kind of sci-fi realm? Or you've done it many times. So. Yeah, I have a I have a blast. I mean, when I, you know, love yeah. the character, of yeah. course. And uh, so I play this character named uh, Vanya Hargreaves in the film, um, also called Number 7. And um, getting to, like, go on this, you know, um, you know, the arc of a character for ten hours yeah. is like a really fun new experience. That's what is so fun when you when we talk we talk about this all the time here is that because you know they have the new there's a new Star Wars series that are coming out and it's going to be on the Disney streaming series. I was like I think this is going to be the best stuff for that particular franchise because of what you just said. You can develop characters from yeah. it's a 10 hour movie. And it can be more like patient. It yep. can be more nuanced, you know, you can have like a theme of an episode that's like really out there, right. you know? I just feel like there's this not that I don't want to sit down and watch a stunning uh, film, of course, right. but that's a you know concise, concise sort of narrative. But um, yeah, it so. makes the playground fun for for actors, I think, because you have, like you said, so for ten, if you're playing this character for ten hours, really ten episodes, that you can really dive in and have some fun and explore. Maybe not know the character as well as you did in the first time, the first script, but by script five. You try new things, you're able to do new things, and it, and it really changes the game. I think it has changed the game. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Um, another, so you've worked with some amazing actors, amazing directors. One of my favorite movies um, that I, I love, because I love kind of going inside of my own head is Inception. Um, how was working with Christopher Nolan and that whole experience? I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And even going into it, you're like, oh, I'm going into this thing. It's five months long. What's this, you know, what's this going to be It was so quiet. Be was, like? yeah. yeah. And uh, and Chris is just such an awesome person to work with. I think it's like, you know, he's just like there every day. He's like always like by the camera holding. I mean, depend. you know, if you're shooting Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, fighting in a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarreling uh, hallway. That's, That's a cool. different yeah. story, but I just feel like he's like a filmmaker. There's like no ego with Chris at all, and uh, he works wonderfully with actors. Like a lot of it is we're all you know piecing it to like you have you know obviously these massive stunt elaborate things, and then you have a lot of these really beautiful hand, like handheld intimate scenes with and i think he's able to take these big concepts and really ground it and yeah. ground the characters and similar to something like umbrella again it's like in this world but yeah. it feels like so human you yeah. know it's it, it really does and he's able to do that he's got like there's and we always talk about that they're we're in this age that there are a few directors who are like the stars, right? When Tarantino does it or Nolan does it, Scorsese, like that's Spike like... Spike Jones. Spike Jones, right, 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 Spike Lee. Like the, you you know that it's it's an event. So when you get a Nolan movie, this, you might not even know what the hell it's about. So a lot of people didn't understand that movie at first. Do you still get questions from people like, what's the end to me? I know. Do you get it all the time? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They I don't the tell movie. me that, right, you right. know? Right, I'm yeah. sure people give it to all the time. The other thing I was going to, did you work, and I'm trying to remember because I know that obviously um, where Marion Cotillard was in was in the movie, and I don't know how many scenes you actually had with her, but the reason I asked, did you guys get to interact at all in that movie? Because there's a reason why I'm asking this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> in 2007, when you guys were going up, she wound up yeah. winning the Oscar. Do you care about, sometimes I talk to actors, and it's always a privilege to be nominated, and then they, there's either the real answer, or the answer of like, ah, it was nice to be nominated, they really want to win it, and some people legit, like, awards don't mean that much to me. Um, where do you stand on it? As far as awards go, like, do you, do you I mean, is it is it one of those things, you, do you look forward to getting nominated? Do you want to be nominated? Do you want to win? That type of stuff. I mean, I think, again, really lucky to be 
and fortunate and fortunate that like I got you know I got picked by J- Jason to be in this mm-hmm. film and all these things and then this happens which really does alter your career so there's this like massive massive you know benefit to something like that happening right. because then you're in a place where you have more control you have more choice you will be considered for a Chris Nolan film or right. what have you right. you know um, ultimately no it's not really a that it's not something I think about right. you know um, and uh, um, and I think um yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just not. You want more of the next challenging role, the more thing that's going to keep you going. Oh, but that's the other thing I was going to ask you about. It. The, the you you were, you were scheduled to direct a film at oh, one point, yeah, right? Yeah. Is directing still? Cause, you know, things happen and and you move away from it. But do, do you um, want to go into? Do you want to direct more? Do you want to do? Something? Well, yeah, but you know what? I think um, particularly after making Gaycation, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, in which case, I was really moved actually when Gaycation was nominated for an Emmy because that obviously lets people more see it right. and moved that these individuals' stories that they shared um, could be, you know, are recognized in that way. Right. So that did feel powerful. Um, but yeah, I think I'm actually more, I f- I'm becoming more interested in directing, um, you know, nonfiction. So. But you are interested in, in doing a lot more directing. Though. Yeah, cool. and more actually. Uh, uh, in terms of the documentary side, or that's where I gravitate to, yeah. and that's I read, mo- you know, actually pretty much all nonfiction, and you know, that's sort yeah. of like where I'm in, inter- like what I'm interested. What in. What kind of stuff are you reading right now? Is there anything that they, uh, yes. the peeps can? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I uh, just read this book called The Mill, um, and it's about a pulp mill in Pictou, Nova Scotia, okay. and it's deplorable environmental impact yeah. um, on that town and, and the province of Nova Scotia and potentially could be even worse because they want to put their effluent out into the Northumberland Strait, which is the part of the Atlantic mm-hmm. between Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. And uh, this has been going on for decades, you know, um, and of course disproportionately affects um, indigenous people. And uh, um, and the cancer rates are high. I mean, it's yeah. it's a it's a mess. Yeah. So, uh, but it's like this decades long story of you know constant government lies and um, and you know and yeah. So well, that was a that was a book that just like gotcha really yeah, got me. Yeah. Well, when you so th- that's I guess going off what you just said. So sometimes you're reading it for your own curiosity and you want to know more and for your own information. But are there times when you're reading some of this stuff, to, like you just mentioned, where you say, well, I've got to find a way to, for more people to actually see this? Because maybe not everyone's going to read about it, but i got to find a way for now people make a doc about it, script something. Totally. Or happen? just share it on social media. Yeah. yeah. And uh, You're pretty active on social media as well, too. Well, yeah. I feel like you do... I'm so privileged to have the platform that I have. Right. So that to me is something that is, you know, that's a pretty simple thing to do. So it yeah. just feels good to share information, to be able to spread the word about the Casablanca Library, to, um, you know, yeah. yeah. So. Well, yeah. good. Um, that is, I'm one more time for everybody listening. It's December 13th at the Ace Hotel at 8 p.m. Um, and where can they get the tickets? At the, on the website? Um, yes, on okay. the website. I think it's AXS. Okay. Well, I looked. It's pinned to your to your Twitter as well too, so they can they can exactly they can yeah. find <laughs> it on Ellen Page's Twitter. Um, it was an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Oh, you too. Thank you so much for coming in. I hope once the TV show comes out, you come back and see us again, so we can talk more about the TV show. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. really excited about it. I'm yeah, really excited. Me too. And uh, again, I'm ve- very happy that I got a chance to sit down. I admire your work. I'm a big fan of you, and I'm even more so now. So thank you so much. Guys, check out Ellen Page. If you're in L.A. or even if not, you can drive in and check it out. December 13th at the Ace Hotel, 8 p.m., Casablanca. And I'm telling you, I have heard about these um, reads that Jason Ryman has done before. There will be some fun guests there. That, and just listening to that Empire Strikes Back when Mark Hamill shows up, you never know what's going to happen. So come check it out. Great cause here for Australia. Thanks again to Ellen Page. To you guys for listening, comment on the podcast YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast feed, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it. 
subscribe it do all that stuff hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows and we will continue to make more of them you can find all your favorite shows from collider on itunes on the collider podcast network thank you very much see you next time